What's up fam? Today we're talking about the Saunders Metacycle. 80 miles of range, 80 miles an hour, and a $5,000 price point. And I'm going to question several of these ratings from the manufacturer. Watch this video to find out why. So we are talking about the Saunders Metacycle, which was debuted on January 14th. Saunders is an e-bike company that started with an Indiegogo campaign that was funded over $6 million. There's always been some controversy around this company as they battled legal issues, delayed shipments in their bikes, price hikes after setting initial prices, etc, etc. So despite all of that, Saunders claims to have over 100,000 riders now, and they're releasing a motorcycle and a three-wheeled car. Not that we've ever seen one of those before. Let's get back to the topic so I can keep this video under 10 minutes. What are we talking about again? Metallurgy? Metaphysics? No, the Metacycle. Also known as the bike that has a giant hole where the gas tank should be. Where is it? Where did it go? Beautiful PR move, Saunders. Beautiful. So Saunders claims a top speed of 80 miles an hour and a range of 80 miles. And honestly, I, I don't know if I believe either one of those. We're gonna get into why. But first, let's talk about the good things. Let's talk about the design of the bike. Just a personal opinion here. I like the way this bike looks. I'm a fan of the minimalistic appearance and aluminum everywhere. So this frame is cast aluminum, which means molten aluminum is poured into a mold uh, and formed. And I believe this is a pretty rare way to make a frame. Uh, I think most frames are still welded together in sections. Let's see, we've got spoke wheels. Uh, they look pretty cool. Got a low profile handlebar height. So inverted forks, uh, why are they inverted? With inverted forks, um, it's less unsprung weight on the front end, so your, your front suspension should react a lot quicker to things like potholes, bumps. Like we've got a single disc brake in the front, a single disc brake in the back, probably some regen braking factored in. I haven't seen any mention of ABS, so it'll be interesting to see if Saunders adds that as a feature in the future. Feature in the future, feature in the future. There will probably be some additional fees in the future as well. One of the real wins here for this bike is the low center of gravity, um, thanks to the battery pack being mounted so low. So your handling should be good as a result of that. The line of the chassis from the handlebars down and to the back of the seat uh, looks great, but the seat looks uncomfortable as f I can tell you right now, one of the first mods for this bike is gonna be bubble wrap and duct tape for your ass. A wheelbase of 52 inches, so that's more than a Honda Grand, but less than a Suzuki GSXR. The weight of this bike is listed as 200 pounds, which is actually less than that of a Honda Grom. And considering that the batteries probably account for over a quarter of the weight and the hub motor probably another 30, 40 pounds, uh, that's pretty good. And the integrated turn signals for the headlight and the brake light uh, are pretty cool. But as others have expressed, I don't know how legal that is. But if you're worried about the lights, you could just slap some bicycle pedals on here and nothing will matter. You can do whatever you want. Right? So we don't have all day. So let's talk about the big hole in the side of the bike. To me, it seems more like a gimmick than anything. Some of the first aftermarket mods you're going to see for this bike are going to be a way to enclose that hole and make that some kind of cargo space. Maybe someone out there is saying, you just don't understand good design. And maybe that's true, but it serves no functional purpose. It's purely an aesthetic point. All right, so let's shift gears here, or lack of, and go on to the performance of this bike. This cycle uses a hub motor, which is rated at eight kilowatts or 11 horsepower nominal or continuous and 14 and a half kilowatts or 20 horsepower peak. Peak power is the amount of power that you can put out uh, for a short duration of time. And it's usually temperature dependent. Continuous power is the amount that you can put out continuously without overheating the motor or the controller. I've also got 80 foot pounds of torque continuous and 130 foot pounds peak. So what does this mean for the Metacycle, right? How can we use these numbers and determine what the performance of this bike will be? How much power do you need to hit a top speed of 80 mile an hour and cruise at it continuously? So using basic physics, we're going to determine how much power you would need to cruise at 80 mile an hour on this bike. And this is where my viewership drops off. No, nah, hopefully you guys are still with me. Real ones, no. We're going to start by calculating the force that would be required to move this bike at 80 mile an hour continuously by overcoming aerodynamic drag, or overcoming rolling resistance, right? Friction, the tire on the pavement. Um, at that speed. We're not counting the force of the wind that could be blowing against you. We're not adding the grade of the road. So this is on a beautiful, clear day with no wind and a nice flat straightaway. Believe it or not, motorcycles have more aerodynamic drag than most cars do and most other vehicles do. And with an upright rider, not crouched and tucked behind a windscreen, uh, your drag is even worse. 
So most MotoGP bikes would have an aerodynamic drag or CDA value of around 0.5 to 0.6 or 0.65. Um, our bike, I picked 0.7. So that's probably better than it actually is in real life with an upright rider. Once we add up all of our forces, we can multiply that value by velocity or our speed continuous. And that will give us power, plain and simple. So power equals 530 newtons multiplied by 35.76 meters per second which is 80 miles per hour. And that gives us 20 kilowatts of power that is needed to cruise continuously at that rate. 20 kilowatts? That can't be right. The Metacycle's rated for 14 and a half. And 20 horsepower? Oh, unless something got crossed, no. Watt is the standard unit for power. So when carrying out this equation, our answer would be in watts, not horsepower. Interesting, right? So check out this power versus velocity graph that I plotted. Uh, you can really see it's exponential thanks to the aerodynamic drag equation. Really, you're just, you're fighting drag. Drag is your biggest thing. Oh, and we didn't even factor in motor losses either or controller losses due to heat. So we're really, we're really being conservative here. For reference, here's a zero SRF with a top speed of 124 miles per hour and a peak power of 82 kilowatts. Our calculator is showing about 72 kilowatts of power needed at that speed. The rated top speed of a Honda Grom is at 56 miles per hour and peak power is about 7.2 kilowatts. Our calculator says about 7.3 kilowatts is needed. Cutting it close there, Honda. So our model isn't perfect, but it definitely gives us some insight into how valid Saunders ratings are. So unless we're missing something major here, I don't think this top speed of 80 miles per hour is attainable. It's definitely not sustainable. In fact, I don't even think 70 miles per hour is sustainable at this peak power rating. Unless Saunders increases the power output somehow, or somebody comes up with a sick fairing mod. Someone double check me on this. Somebody run through the math and, and verify my claim. Good news here is though, you've got gobs of torque, plenty of torque. 130 foot pounds of torque is the peak torque of 16 plus Honda Groms. So let's look at acceleration and calculate something close to a zero to 30 mile per hour time. It's all for acceleration uh, with force over mass. So we're gonna use the torque that uh, Saunders gave us, maximum of 130 foot pounds. So we know the radius of the tire, we can solve for force and then we can solve for acceleration as you can see there. So after four seconds, uh, you're doing about 34 miles an hour. All right, so we've talked a good bit about the performance. Let's talk about the range. The Metacycle offers up to 80 miles on a single charge, but what does that mean? So remember that whole using power thing, cruising at a continuous speed? That's only one side of the coin. So city driving is a whole nother deal because you've got stop and go, stop and go, acceleration, deceleration. And we could build a simulator to you know, simulate stop and go driving on specific routes. We could even plug in Google Maps maybe, but I don't have time for that. Or well, maybe we'll build a simulator eventually. Just to get an idea, let's look at what it would take to cruise at 60 miles per hour for 15 minutes straight. So cruising at 60 miles per hour, we're using about 9 kilowatts of power, uh, and we multiply that by 0.25 hours, right, because 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, and that gives us about 2,250 watt hours. That's more than half of our stated capacity of 4,000 watt hours of the battery. Another example, this time you're cruising at 30 miles per hour for 15 miles continuously, all right? So 1.5 kilowatts of power continuous multiplied by 0.25 hours gives us 375 watt hours. So that's not even 10% of the battery capacity. So you can really see how the different speeds affect your range. So you can achieve Saunders 80 mile range claim by cruising at about 40 miles per hour, which yields close to 50 watt hours per mile. The only way you're getting anywhere close to that range claim is by riding low and slow. And the thing is, nobody that's buying this bike is gonna do that. Like, why would you not top it out? Why would you not just be a total fool on this bike with all that torque? So I say this all not to dissuade anybody from buying this bike. I think the bike is awesome. You know, I'm just being real with you. Last but not least, let's go over the battery pack. We know that this battery is rated at 4,000 watt hours, uh, but if that's your maximum, you're not gonna wanna use all of that energy because you don't wanna run your battery down to 0%. So we also see that the bike runs at 72 volts, but we don't know if that's nominal or peak. Generally, 72 volts is used for a nominal rating and your full voltage, would, fully charged would be like 84 volts. So that's about 20 cells in series. But when we're calculating this stuff, we usually use the nominal voltage of a lithium cell, which would be 3.7 volts. 1,000 watt hours divided by our nominal voltage of 74 volts, which is 20 cells in series at 3.7 volts each, gives us about 55 amp hours. Blah, 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 blah. Let's say they're using uh, the 18650 cell right in this pack. So an average of maybe 3.2 amp hours per cell. 
right? So 55 over that gives us about 17 cells in parallel. So we now have a 20 series, 17 parallel pack. That's 340 cells total. And 340 cells is about 35 pounds of weight. You could sit here and spitball all day long, but it really doesn't matter because we could plug in all kinds of different batteries and we're still going to get results that lie somewhere between 30 pounds and probably 45-ish pounds of battery weight alone. So where the hell is the motor controller and all the electronics? Unless they stash them in the frame, they're also in the battery pack. So that battery probably weighs about 50 pounds, if I had to guess. Apparently, this battery is removable, so you guys are going to need to bulk up. <laughs> you, we might want to start now. So the standard charger that's included will probably be, I don't know, around 10 amps. So you can charge in four to six hours. And the option for level two charging is an accessory that you can add on. And that should bring charge times down to like, what, two, three hours. So with all that being said, um, I'm actually really excited for this bike. I think this opens the door to uh, a more affordable electric motorcycle. You know, for a motorcycle at that price point, I mean, you know, you're more expensive than the pedal electric bikes that also get up to 60 miles an hour. You know, this is more like a motorcycle, um, but you're, you know, less expensive than the Zeros and the Energicas and some of the other bikes that are out. So it'll be really interesting to follow Saunders and see, you know, how they crank these out and uh, what kind of timeline they can do them on. I am just going to predict right now, take that, that anticipated production or delivery date and add half a year or a year to it. That's just, I feel like that's reasonable to say. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I tried to make the review that you deserve. You know, I put some work in. So if you liked it, please subscribe, smash that like button. You know, I did it all for the community. I hope it helps you guys out. Thanks again. Be safe.